webinar is being recorded. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, it is, let's see, July 8th, I think. For anybody who may have tried to get on a week or two ago, apologies. We had some last-minute uh, schedule changes and are pushing that meeting until today. Um, so we did not discuss any business. Uh, nobody missed anything. Uh, all right. So moving through our agenda today, the first item of business will be the approval of our meeting minutes from, uh, we said it was April. Is that right? April. April. All right. Um, so um, if I can get a motion to approve, then we can go over any uh, any comments. I submit the motion to approve the April minutes. All right. And a second. Second. Jonas. All right. Jomas. <laughs> we get that. Your name is is all right. Um, any comments for the meeting minutes? Joe Jomas. I'll if that is us, I'll fix that because <laughs> that's two two times in a row. Just don't quote me under that name. I don't have any specific uh comments from the meeting. Yeah, yeah, I just read have, through them. Yeah, That's I don't good. have any. Okay, neither, neither do I. Then um, since this motion is on the floor, let's go ahead and um, vote all in favor. Uh, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 And Jonas, were you good as well? Okay, so we've got four approved. I'm going to abstain. Um, that's enough for the minutes to pass. Uh, I also realized that uh, we did not designate a minute taker for today. Um, so could I get uh, ask for a volunteer, please? Thank you, Matt. You're the best. All right. Okay. Then second item uh, on the agenda will be the War Memorial redesign. Amy, I know you're on the phone. Thanks for joining. Uh, you want to walk us through the latest here? Well, I see it's walking okay. this, by the way. Just working on the unmute. All you right. Got it? Cool. Um, there's the light. Um, and can, am I going to be able to share a screen so I can just, I was going to just kind of run through the slide presentation that I gave to town council. And then there's a couple other things that I threw in there, but I have, I just, I think it, I think it should be okay. good now. Cool. Let's see if I can do this. Um, I, sorry, I'm just not seeing it as an option to select on my screen. screen multiple. No, it's like, uh, it's showing me okay. every uh, single other screen that I have open, but multiple not panelists can show all windows. There we go. Okay. There we go. Um, are you guys seeing this? Yeah. Got yes. it. Yep, okay, definitely. cool. Um, so like I said, this is. A lot of this is what I showed to the town councils um, a week ago. So some of this, you guys have already heard some stuff, but then some of it's a little, um, some of this you might not have heard. So, um, you know, kind of talking about the War Memorial Project, um, you guys I know are aware because we've been talking about this for a while. Um, short term goal is to get that bathhouse replaced um, because it is old and in disrepair. Um, and we kind of struggle every year to make sure that um, it, it is able to be opened so that we can continue to use the War Memorial Pool. Um, Long-term goal is to revitalize the area around it, which I know is the more exciting part of the project, um, but um, the more immediate need is the bathhouse. Um, these are just some photos that showcase what, you know, what we're battling against. So there's a lot of, you know, rusty pipes, as you can see, um, you know, rusty pipes and peeling and, um, you know, kind of dealing with that. The floor, you know, we've we've tried to refinish the floor, but the floor is in rough shape. There's some more rusty pipes over here. Um, you can also see here the CMU block is pulling away. So it's forming gaps. Um, this we've got another like the CMU wall splitting and we've got some of the ceiling falling down in here. Um, and then, you know, you can see the the CMU that's against the uh, ground is starting to kind of erode from the ground up over time. Um, and this is kind of all the way around. That's what allows the critters in, which do some of the damage on the inside as well. Um, 
you know, again, more some, some rusty pipes. Um, the roof, this isn't an awesome shot, but you can kind of see that there are some places where there's um, shingles that are missing there. Um, so that's just some of, you know, a little bit of a snapshot of what um, this pool, uh, the pool house looks like, which I just think in general users of the pool, unfortunately, it, you know, they all have to go through this pool house. And so it's, it's, it's not the most welcoming uh, way to showcase our town um, on the way to using this facility. Um, the, the history, um, in case you guys didn't know when that pool house was built, it was 1953. Um, and so that, that, that somewhat talks about the condition. Um, we know that the filter system was replaced at one point. Um, we don't know about that, but other than that, we don't know of any major substantial changes or upgrades, um, to the pool house. So other than that, in 2012, there was, um, we did some work to the pool itself and we replaced the filtration system. And then there was some pool deck work, including, um, inclusion of ADA, um, accessibility sort of things. Um, but there wasn't, we haven't redone the roof. We haven't, you know, we haven't done anything really, um, to the pool house. Um, and as you guys know, the 2019, uh, facilities strategic plan, um, has this vision. That's what I'm showing to the left here. Um, they kind of have a vision of how to revitalize the area. Um, and this is one of the priorities that they were recommending to the town work on. Um, and this last year, um, you know, you guys in the rec commission were really, um, helpful in, um, advocating for us to get some funding for the preliminary design, um, which is the, the phase that we're in right now. Um, and you guys were also helpful in advocating for some funding for the initial construction, uh, which we hope to be moving into. So, um. So thus, thus far, I know the uh, rec commission, you guys have um, played played a huge role and been very helpful in us moving this project forward. Hey, Amy, um, can I ask a question on the sure. previous, actually could be both, is that I've seen <clears throat> sort of various, I feel like I've seen various um, renderings of perspective layouts. Um, is there like a current one that we should be looking at? Is yeah, this so... Yeah, so this one right here that we're showing, um, this is the one from the 2019 strategic plan. And it's kind of the, we, we kind of call that the 10,000 foot view. Um, it actually show, you know, if you look very carefully at it, it, you know, it's showing these basketball courts right now where the tree and grounds building is, um, which the DPW tree and grounds building, which um, I, I don't know that that's going to be moving <laughs> for several years. So, you know, this is kind of not available space right now, um, you know, in this fitness circuit. Um, who knows if that can get built out if we still have the tree and grounds building there. So some of it is just not currently realistic. But again, the point of that study was more that, that 10,000 foot view and then let's drill into it. Um, yeah, no, un understood. Thank you. Yeah. So this this slide here is what um, during the, the FY24 project that allowed us to bring on an architect um, to start taking that 10,000 foot view and kind of um, getting us a little closer. This is the, the current schematic that we're looking at. Um, so the pool staying in place, the pool house um, shifting over, which is what was in that 2019 um, design, uh, the potential for a splash pad, um, you know, that, that hasn't necessarily, you know, that's one of the areas where a decision could be made if we want to have a, you know, a smaller version of a splash pad and then some, um, play elements, uh, you know, potential for a kind of a picnic area. Um, and then, um, using the slope, they were really creative in thinking about ways to use the slope. So this is a little pavilion, um, Kind of amphitheater area so you can use the slope to your advantage and then there's also some play elements kind of similar to you know groff has that um slope slide um so they they had a lot of different options for that sort of thing so anyway do you want me to take a question oh uh, yeah jonas yeah yeah the question the uh the existing is that that important the, the existing field house on the bottom there is that actually to scale and the purple will be, looks like almost what, six times bigger than the 
Is that correct? Yep. I, I remember uh, what is that? The this right here, it's the, we call it the community room or the community, the sorry, community no, sorry. bathhouse. I'm, I'm misspeaking. So that's called, you're, I guess you're calling it a field house, not the bathhouse. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. sorry, it's, that's, that's a label, but yeah, that's, that's okay. the bathhouse. So if you want to think of the scale, um, that's the bathhouse or uh, sorry, the, like the bathroom that I think just has like a couple of stalls for men and women. Um, oh, down here. that is effectively, but that's not the current bathhouse. No, no, sorry. The current bathhouse is right here. You've labeled it correctly. I, I misread it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Amy, just uh, if I could backtrack just a, a just a quick, I uh, you may even say it's unnecessary at this point, but do you also want to share uh, uh, stressors that were answered in Capitol last year for the War Memorial? Because I know there was there were some additions. You were talking about a history of the additions over there in the pools, and and it was the focus of Capitol. Uh, capital requests last year with the with the with the uh pool drainage oh yeah um yeah it's that's it's funny because it's a separate project but it it certainly shows that i i feel like part of the conversation that comes up every single time as we're talking about this and especially when we get to the point where we talk the price tag um everyone always gets back to the fundamental conversation of do we need two pools um, which I think is a fair question. And I think it's something that from what I've seen every time we have that conversation, um, people ultimately get back to, yes, we need two pools. But I also think like, again, that's another role that the rec commission can, th that's another role that you guys can play is to continue to advocate, you know, maybe this summer we can try to collect some data about the pool usage to show how used both of the pools in town are to show how uh, important they are. Um, but again, the importance of it is also shown in the town, um, continuing to, um, put money towards the other improvements that are needed. So we do have money right now from an FY24 CPA allocation to, we're going to do a drainage project. We're going to reline the pool. Um, and, um, and Ray, the, uh, ADA chairs just got delivered. So I, I think like I Wednesday heard, or Thursday. Later I heard that was week, exciting. <laughs> Yeah, later this week we're hoping to install new functional ADA chairs at both. I places. went. I went immediately when Ellen told me to uh, to contact Denise and let her know that the ADA chairs were in, and she was in the middle of contacting me and saying, "I just saw the ADA chairs coming in." So yeah, it like it was like a birthday morning there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Chris, I uh, got a question as well, Chris. Well, I just had a comment from a CIT. Can you you can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Um, because that pool is significantly used for the camp. So like the one pool comment, I was just throwing something on that. Like they're at the pool like 80% of that day, the whole twice a day. So, and I don't know if those were reflected in the pool membership numbers or not, but you know, they, they the middle school counselor program for the summer campers uses that pool every day twice a day for swim lessons and everything like that. I think, I think that uh, Amy's definitely right. Every time we start talking about uh, an improvement here or, a, or, or some need with either one of the pools, then necessarily the question comes up and says, can we reduce the amount of cost that we put into these pools by coming back to this Amherst need to pools is the question that we keep on going back to. And I think the answer is yes. I think many of us probably agree with me that we do. Uh, I hear Chris saying that right now, saying, look, they're they're filled every day. Um, I think one of the things, and this is sort of looking at a teaser for the OSRP conversation that's next on the agenda uh, and the and that that delay. I think one of the things that this gets there's a silver lining for us, and Amy brought this up in a conversation with me last week. I think one of the one of the silver lining of of us being on pause a little bit with the the OSRP and and on the and the designs that we're we're basically uh, hitting pause on these on these uh, projects here. Uh, it gives us a chance to collect the data that says what Chris just said. It gives us a chance to look in and and 
and talk about usage, talking about about uh, the demand. We can talk about the amount of people who who use it, who need it. Talking about the uh, the, the the central role that it plays in summer life here in Amherst, and so we can do a little bit more work here to try and get that information to say this uh, in a way that's not. You know the well duh argument that I that I'm I feel like I constantly move back to when we when we have that question do we need two pools? I agree. I would I would add I would actually advocate that let let's gather let's gather the data this summer. Let's get photos. You know, like the let let's do what we can so that we answer the question for them. It's not a question. It's just a fact. Um, I think we have the opportunity to do that this summer, collect that data. I don't know where we have hands raised. Yeah, Chris, any anything else to add or are you done? No, that, that was perfect. That was- All right, great. Uh, Jean. Yeah, I was gonna say, plus if we do have upgrades to the bathhouse and to the pool, I'm sure the usage would it would increase, right? Uh, and definitely be more attractive to more people to, to use it. I just uh, also had another question, Amy. So any, I know you mentioned some updates to the pool itself, but any other ideas of say like putting in a slide or making it more like family friendly in that type of way or more just how it is now? So we haven't necessarily looked at that. Um, the, the At least the instruction that we were giving to the consultant was the pool itself stays where it is. You know, basically everything, you know, this square of pool deck and everything within it stays where it is and then we had the opportunity to do any you know to look at anything outside of that um but that's an interesting interesting thought for sure thank you we have a little awesome. splash park sorry with the splash pad and everything i think if younger um you know kids came or however i think it would still just a little extra fun <laughs> all right thank you gene matt um, I, I feel like you kind of have, have avoided talking about the actual issue here, which is that, um, you know, you, you, you said going into this, that you were hoping the project to be in the, you know, one and a half to two and a half million. And then it came back at 4 million and I don't understand why that happened. And I can understand why the town council balked at, the, at that happening. Yeah, that's a later slide. You're just jumping ahead. You guys had a lot of questions. Well, on. that's that's the that's the okay. thing I want to talk about. Okay. Yeah, no, so I, I was actually just thinking that a question or two ago, Amy. Do you, do you want to just go through everything and then we can hit you with questions? That's great. That's okay. great. Yeah. Um I think the other thing that came up in conversation that I just want to point out or a couple of the places that, you know, we're talking about is um Right now, we, you know, they were looking at ways to, if we're going to invest in this, is there a way to make the pool not, or the pool house not just useful for two months out of the year? Um, because it, you know, it is a lot of investment for two months. And so they're looking at ways to make it um, an eight month facility, which means when the pool isn't in use, the pool house could still be used for other functions. Like basically it would be a bathroom um, and locker room facility for the other months when the pool is closed, um, which would just put a bathroom closer to the track, um, you know. Um, and um, the other thing was the potential for a community room for, you know, camps to use or for, you know, renting out for um, birthday parties or meetings or, you know, whatever might want to have happen there. So um, those are just kind of a couple other items up for discussion. Um, this just shows quickly the phasing. So again, you know, phase one is the bathhouse and the um, improvements that would need to happen in that immediate area. Um, so ADA improvements and drainage improvements that would need to happen if you're plunking a building right there. And then phase two would be all the all the fun stuff that everyone gets really excited talking about, um, with which is you know a potential splash pad or playground elements or all that stuff. Um, yeah, we can we can actually go back to this, but this um, this just shows it's a little bit of the the layout of um, of the facility, and so you've got you know starting from the left we have 
Um, the community room, if we decide that we want it. Um, if not, that's an element that could get taken out. Um, I think it it doesn't save as much as people think it would save. Um, so it's a question on, is, you know, are, do we want that trade off or is that a place to um, cut the budget a little bit? Um, there's a family restroom that even when the pool's in use would still allow people to use this as a restroom facility um, in the summer. Um, so again, like if in the future we have the splash pad or the, you know, the playground or that sort of thing, we needed to have a bathroom that was always available to those during those uses, just even if the pool is open. Um, and then men's locker room. Rest is North room. left on? Um, oh, sorry, to orient you, um, Triangle Street is over to the left, Mattoon Street yes. is to the right. North left. I don't see a north arrow on this. No, no. All right, so the community out. room the, the, would be the, the, back, the pool. Though. The pool is at the top. The, the pool, pool would be at, at the top. top. Yep. Yes. And north is to the right. Yeah. So the community north room is to is the right. Back of the is in the back. The yeah, building, it would be on the sure. Triangle Street side. Yeah. Yep. Um. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So we've got, you know, the men's room and the women's room, uh, restroom, um, locker rooms. Um, we have exterior showers, which just cuts down on the footprint um, rather than having to have shower, actual shower facilities inside, uh, family restroom, mechanical room, uh, changing booths, and then the lifeguard area. Um, so there's not, there's not a, there's not a ton that could potentially be taken out. Um, this is a pretty stripped down version, but um, again, that's all part of the conversation. Um, this is just the same layout, but without the community room. So what it would look like if we just cut the community room out. Um, the big the big concern with this is the cost for buildings have gone up and we saw that with the Jones Library and we saw that with the schools and we saw that with uh North Amherst Library and so you know that's that's a big portion of why our back of the envelope con calculation versus what we're anticipating now has drastically changed um we you know so far like i said uh CPA the FY25 CPA um, they, they voted, um, you know, so as of a couple of weeks ago, um, we do have, uh, $750,000 for a portion of, um, the, uh, construction cost. Um, what we're currently thinking initially, I was going to be submitting a park grant application to try to get some additional funding, um, like, it would be due the end of this week. Um, the town has decided to essentially hit the pause button and to target looking at grant applications for next year. And part of it is with this much money, even if we were to get the park grant or the land water, um, the land water grants, there's still going to be a sizable gap and we wouldn't be prepared to move forward with it anyway. So we want to be in a better position, but I think there's also, we don't want this to be moving forward at the same time as the track, um, just kind of strategically, it's going to be really hard for, um, we don't want to pit the two projects against each other. We want them both to move forward. And so they, they can't be at the same time um, in order for, at least that that's the thought is they, they won't both be successful if we're trying to push them forward at the same time. Um, so right now we're looking at um, 2025 being the earliest that we can apply for grant funding, um, and anywhere between half a million and a million is possible if we're successful, depending on the grant and depending on what we're successful in getting. Um, the other thing that, um, you know, that the town leadership is asking us to do is, um, to, um, put in a request again for CPA to try, um, uh, to try to, continue to get more funds um, to start closing the gap between what we potentially, what we could get for grants and what we need for the project. And we're just trying to kind of close that gap. So 
that's that's the important one that I know Matt wants to talk about. So, yeah. All right. Is that um, all of it, Amy? That's it. All right. Oh, quit cool. there. You go. Okay. Um, and there's some latency on my screen share, I think so. Um, all right, uh, Chris, I see your hand still up, but let's start with Matt since he, yeah, thanks, Matt. Or right, thanks, Chris. Go ahead, Matt. So, Anything else to add? Um, I, I just had a question that, that you skipped over with the the um, the track. So, when you say the track, yeah, the track is trying to go forward this year. Are you trying to get park grant money for the track, or you're just talking about the town capital budget? It's it's talking about the town capital budget, even okay. if so. Yeah. So there was no there was no application for park grant for the track project. No, no, I think it was just even if we're successful with the park grant, we're still going to need some capital yeah. from the town, yeah. and so asking for right. both the same year. Yeah. I, I, I understand. I understand. I just thought, yeah. I understand that. Okay. So I'm still I'm still struggling to understand why an unconditioned, you know building that's not that big costs four million dollars what's this what's like, the square footage of it amy i think it's around it's somewhere in um two thousand five hundred and uh three thousand yeah. yeah so that that's more per square foot than a school which is you know net zero school um so i don't understand why it it seems it seems a lot I think it, I think I could probably echo the same question that Matt's asking, but that four million dollars does include the recreation area upgrades also, right? It's not just the pool house and building. That's the pool house with the um, the drainage it, and site improvements that, that would need to happen around the pool house. But that's this and, is and the demolishing the old one. one. Yeah. Four million still seems pretty steep, but I don't. Uh, I want to make sure that we're not talking about four million dollars for just that that pool. House. It doesn't include. It doesn't include phase two. It's just phase it doesn't one, include which phase is two. correct. The demo, the demo, and rebuilding of a new building. So, got it. Over a thousand bucks a foot to build it out. Twelve, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred bucks a foot. This is not analogous, but the the mall in Hadley just sold for seven million. The entire mall, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Is it a case of, um, there's an entry price, even small projects, like kind of what we had with the, with a library where there's not an incentive to bid, you know, some, some jobs are too, are too small. If you heard people, no job is too small, but, but bids just come in high because, oh, if, if they take it, it'll be worth us doing this project. I think that happens sometimes. That um, might be why the per square foot, you know, there, there's certainly a, uh, a breaking point in less per square footage as the building gets bigger. Um, right. I mean, the North Amherst library, that little extension, wasn't that $2 million <laughs> just for that little addition to the North Amherst library? So. Yeah. I mean, I, I will just say that for, um, in my line of work where we build bank branches. So we're looking at 1,300 to 1,500 a foot here to build that, um, you know, we're in the 1,300 to $1,800 a foot range. And that that has increased by, you know, 40% in the last five years. So like the escalations, I, I, I get it. And the smaller the building, the more per square foot. So like, you know, it, it costs you the same to build the bathroom whether you're in a big building or a small building. So it's going to make it look worse the smaller it is. Um, okay. Um, Matt, I, I have some questions, but Matt, I want to make sure that you um, got all of yours out. Um, I just think that well, uh, yeah, I mean, partly it's sticker shock, I think, but I think also it's just a lot of money for 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 a, the bathhouse for the pool. Um, so, and uh, yeah, even if you think of it as a as a bathroom and community room, it's still a lot of money. I, I don't disagree with anything that you're saying, Matt, and it's partly why I thought it was important to 
put the number out there. You know, I don't want to get so far along in the project and then put the number out there. Um, and, and trust me, like we have gone back to the designer and kept saying, what else can we cut off? Like, I want the number that I presented to you to be as small as possible because it is more, you know, it's shocking to me too. Um, Jonas, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what what are the must haves for it to be a pool? I assume um, there's probably a health requirements that there's a shower. People are probably required to shower before they go in the pool. Beyond that, um, what are the the amenities that you're looking at that are nice to haves? And, and like, what? How much could it be stripped down to where you still think it could support people just want to go and swim? And would yeah. You um, I'm going to go back to the, the drawing so we can kind of look at this. So, you know, the, the must haves, we need, we need some sort of storage space to be able to put all of the equipment that we need for the pool. So, um, you know, that's where the, you know, the, the lifeguard buoys go when they're not being used and the lane, you know, the lane lines and, you know, any of those things as they, they come in and go out. So that's, uh, the pool storage you need. Um, the bathrooms you need, and um, there's plumbing code that requires a certain number of fixtures per user of the pool. So that's based on usership that requires this, you know, so the men's restroom and the women's restroom, that's set. Um, you need showers. Um, you're allowed to have exterior showers. And so that saves on space and it saves on the duplication of needing to have X number for the men's side and the women's side. Um, you need to have some sort of changing area. Um, so we have the changing booth and then we have the locker rooms that are envisioned at that. Um, one place that could be stripped down would be, um, you know, the locker rooms could be made smaller. Um, you know, um, so that that's one place where some space could be saved. Um, and then, you need to have somewhere for the lifeguards to be off duty, um, you know, for them to be able to sit and get out of the sun because they're in the sun the rest of the day, but also not be on duty. Like if they're, even if they're like sitting under umbrella on the pool deck, people are still going to ask them questions. They're still kind of there. And so having a, a space for them um, to be separated, um, I guess that's not a plumbing code. That's more of a, you know, let's talk logistics of how to make sure that our staff can work um, efficiently. Um, so, that, you know, again, maybe maybe this is a place where some of that space is stripped down. Um, so that's, um, I guess that, that, that kind of walks through the must-haves versus the um, places where we try to um, look at efficiency. Oh, the mechanical room. You need to have a mechanical room for all the things that you need, um, including, I think right now, not knowing if we're going to have a splash pad or not, they are making the mechanical room big enough that it could house the filtration for uh, the splash pad if it was there, because right now it will not fit in the room that has the filtration system for the, the rest of the pool. Um, so that, that accounts for a little bit of the mechanical room. Um, the vestibule here is a, just a roof. That's not an actual building space. This en entry plaza and this whole area, this is all open space that just has a roof over it. So shaded space, but not a building. So. Great. Thanks for the rundown. Yeah. Jeremy? My only real question was, what are the what is the likelihood, just back to what you were saying, Amy, that this four million probably only goes up next year, right? Amy, I mean, it probably doesn't go down. And then the other thought process I had behind the whole thing is we're talking about getting the numbers right now, but here, if you if we skimp on it or make it smaller, would that impact? I mean, I guess maybe it's in the condition it's in now and has the usage it has now. So if any improvement you make likely is going to increase usage, which theoretically could increase some form of monetization. I guess I just wonder about 
I guess the decision to delay has already been made, and I understand that. It just seems to me that I don't want to have a bigger sticker shock in a year, <laughs> you know what I mean, when we're all like, oh, well, now it's, you know, 4.25 million or <laughs> four and a half million because you're demoing the building that suffered decades of delayed maintenance. You're going to have to come up to every plausible current code, right? And that costs money. It just, it's, it's just if you're building a new house from scratch in Amherst, It's just going to cost money, right? So I guess it's a question and commentary. Yeah, no, I guess my response to that, Jeremy, would just be, you know, I, I certainly, uh, I advocated my concerns with pushing this back a year. Um, and one of it was, you know, obviously the, the cost of all of these things has been going up so rapidly. We don't even know what the number is going to be in a year. And it could be a small increment. It could be a larger increment. Um, the other concern that I have is right now we are limping that building along and hoping that we don't have to put some serious money. But I was like, the reality is we're gambling. And it's possible if this takes another year, um, then I might have to go back to the town manager and say, either the pool doesn't open or we have to invest $100,000 into fixing this thing that you know right now doesn't pass inspection. And um, I, I hope that we don't get there, but the reality is we may have to throw a little bit of good money at bad um, in the short term. And, and that has to be a risk that everyone's willing to take with this timeline. So. All right. Um, so uh, just a couple of thoughts here. One, the cost is only going to go up. Like I can guarantee you it's only going to go yes. up. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I've designed questions. I'm not going to go into that. But I think, to me, a very important point that you made, Amy, early on, which which needs to be, I think, thought of maybe a lot more seriously, is the idea of the community room. Like, that's – the utilization, to me, is key. Like, $4 million for a building that's used once a year, to your point – is very different than $4 million to a building that can be used year round in a town where we have shortage of community space. So I think the last thing you want to do is skimp on that. I think that that can actually factor in as much larger piece to, to the design, frankly. Um, so yeah, I, I would not change anything relative to the, the space utilization. I think it's very important to be focused on how, we can improve that overall um, two month cycle to a eight month or why not a full year, right? I mean, if you can have a, a community space that's got conditioned air and so forth, then you could do any sort of event in there at any time of the year. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I do have, I, I, I do have some issues with the design. We won't get into that. Um, but um, what, how, I guess, is there any input that you are looking for from us at this point, Amy, or is this purely informational at this point? Is there anything that we can do to 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 influence any decision making? Uh, I think there's a couple of roles that the Rec Commission uh, can play. And so one is, um, you know, what can we do to gather information, gather photos and, you know, do our best to advocate for two pools in Amherst because um, that conversation always comes up. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'd love to hear if if anybody has ideas or ways that they can kind of help that, um, help us gather information. Um, this, Sorry, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, also, you know, like I said, we're, we're getting, um, the town manager wants us to put together uh, a CPA request for this upcoming round. So we'll be pulling that together in um, in August, I think is when we have to look at starting to submit that. And again, like having the rec commission be behind that request and advocating for that request would be helpful. Um, yeah, I think th those are the two big things. So this is informational, but also for you know, it's it's valuable to hear your feedback, but then also like what are what are ways that you guys can help um, drive this forward? I think 
uh, you know, frankly, probably also just if this gets delayed again, um, all of those concerns that you brought up may need to be heard in a much sure. heard beyond yeah. by just by me. And that's another role that you guys can play is just making sure that this doesn't this doesn't continue to get delayed. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we learned our lesson by pushing the school back, right? In terms yeah. of how much extra that's costing us for that decision. Um, I would just add to I, that all makes sense. Thanks, Amy. I would add just Ray that you know, it might be useful also to get some, um, just some research on some some standards across the U.S. So I, while we're talking, I just pulled up um, a couple websites online to see, is there any kind of per capita recommendation, you know, like for how many uh, pools per person in the U.S.? And let's see how that compares to Amherst. And the quick numbers were, there's one pool per every 38,000 people across the US, we have 38,000 people in Amherst right now, but that there is the National Park and Rec Association recommends one per 20,000. So if there's some standards that we can that we can leverage that just say for healthy communities, you want to offer this amenity at a certain rate, then that would be really useful to bring in as well. And it sounds like, at least according to National Park and Rec, we should have two. Um, okay. Um, Matt, I see your hand up. Yeah, so I guess I have sort of a, a radical question, which um, you, you may or may not be interested in following up on. But what happens if instead of building the pool house in a different location, we build a new pool house where the old pool house is? Would that be cheaper? Um, there would be a couple elements that would be cheaper because we wouldn't need to bring... Um, Right now, we need to bring electricity. Like we just the utilities are going to need to go to the new building. Um, what we there's a couple of things that we gain with moving it. You know, one is if we put it in the current location, we are going to lose at least one pool season, um, where the pool house would be under construction and therefore um, wouldn't be able to be open because um, you need the pool house to have the pool. Um, so that would be uh, that would be a good thing. Um, it also right now where the pool house is located, um, not ideal. Uh, it's a good hiding spot for say high school people, high school kids who are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. It's really easy for them to be pretty invisible behind that building. Um, and so relocating has kind of a strategic advantage of um, putting, I guess just kind of being able to see through the park a lot better. It's harder for them to hide. Um, and do things they shouldn't be doing. So, well, how, how much and it, it makes it more scalable to the future plan as well, right? I mean, it allows right. us to do this multi generational plan. Yeah, it allows it allows a more continuous space for all of the other elements that people want. Where the pool house, where it is now, it's it's a little it's a little disjointed, but certainly it has worked in the past. So that's yeah. Would also that's a good question, though, is more of like all the you said electricity, would there also be like plumbing, all the yeah, electricity, water, site work. Sewer. So it seems like you could save quite a bit by reusing the existing footprint of the field house. And to, I, I think losing one season, especially if we're just even trying to convince people we need this pool, is not a huge price to pay if we have another pool. If I don't, I, mean, I don't know what the, how many millions of dollars we could save, but if it took you from four million to who you're you're not you would, yeah i don't know that you would saving that much i don't know what right, that is yeah, yeah jonas i think i think it's like you lose a season right because we want to build that facility as it is because that's what we need for our capacity right so the building cost the building cost would be the same the site work might be cheaper but you still have to do the demo and you still have to rebuild it so i think the savings is really primarily the the site work and then that's offset by the loss of the season and then also just loss of momentum as well. It just from a community perspective, I think that it's um it's a it's a tough thing to to take the pool offline for a year. And and it also I think I think it does potentially impact that um that larger plan. Um so anyway, I, I don't mean to to shut the idea down, but I do feel like um Faster is better just for cost of savings. Um, 
but yeah, I, I don't know that it, it would make sense to to jettison the plan for a for that short term um that short short shorter term gain. And Chris, the the programs that you mentioned, like from the from the middle schools, I mean they're they're right there. But they can't I mean it'd be harder to get them all the way over to Mill River if they had to use the park there or the pool there for swim lessons and all that stuff. If the pool were closed for a season. I guess I'm maybe misunderstanding. Like when I think of, I'm just going to simplify it down to like a bathroom renovation that I would think of. I'm thinking I keep my plumbing, my electric. Maybe I want to make it bigger. I make the bathroom bigger, but I've kept so many of the costs. But maybe this is a different animal that I'm not understanding. Yeah, it's it's a little different, and partly it's because the plumbing codes have changed since 1953, and so we can't even reuse the foundation of the building because it's got to be, even a stripped-down version has got to be bigger. And so, yes, the we don't have to take the water line from Mattoon Street and rerun it to the existing location, and we would have to, you know, run that. We'd have to put in a new utility pole to get electricity from the far side of Mattoon Street over to the new building, where right now it runs um, by where the filter room is and then comes in. So there, there's some, yes, you save some of that, you know, running the utilities and then some of the site work. Um, there would probably be a much smaller um, amount of site work that would be needed in the current location. Um, but you can't like, you still have to excavate the entire area and would lose an entire season. Um, of yeah. These. Well, yeah. if you can't even reuse the foundation, then I can understand why you're saying you're not going to save that much. Yeah. I think these are all important conversations to have, though. So I, I do appreciate these comments coming up just because these are conversations that we've had with the designer, but I think they're natural questions and they're important to you know, to kind of reconfirm this is why this decision is made and we all feel comfortable with that decision. So. I, I hear in sticker shock here also, you're looking at a huge cost and saying, what can we, is there stuff that we really, really want that we can sacrifice in the name of, of, uh, of, of sort of progress here. And, you know, yeah, I I definitely my first thought is I don't want I would never want to lose a season of 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 uh, programming that I don't have to, but I was uh, we did have this conversation early on in the process with the with the architects with the designers about about whether or not we wanted to move it off the site and what we gain what we lose from it. Uh, I I I do. Uh, I, it's a question that we had to ask about about existing resources. Uh, that that I don't think that it makes sense to do it if it doesn't save us the money that we're trying to save. I'm curious, Ray. And this, I mean, I think back maybe two years ago, and I remember right as we were about to bring. I think it was War Memorial online. We had a pump that failed. And the pool was closed for like the first was, what, two weeks of the season. Yes. I, I'm more, I'm just curious, like that's a perfect example. Like what, what was the feedback? How did the camps work around it? Like, was it sustainable? Was it not? Like we had this exact scenario I in can, a very I small. Say in a, in a, to, to basically describe it really quickly, it was a public relations nightmare, um, but more so it was also a financial nightmare for us because we had to rent the arms pool to to uh supply for our camps gene started to say that we can, it doesn't make sense to pull them all and try and transport our camps over the mill and run a log jam over there we we actually that was that was a concern of ours so we rented the arms the arms pool and we're basically paying somebody else we were renting a pool to serve as our second pool there to 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 satisfy our lessons to satisfy our camp concerns to satisfy all those pieces um and that was that was financial we also had to maintain to maintain our staff and wait for that summer i think it probably would have been easier in some ways if the if the uh, if we were closed at war for that whole year, but we had to hold on to a staff. We had a larger than needed staff at mill because we didn't want to lose those guards for when we did get the pump piece back. And 
So we actually had one pool and one, uh, we had one pool operational. One out of two pools were operational. We probably had about 1.5 uh, of our staff, uh, of, our, of our two pool staff employed at the time because we're trying to make sure we didn't lose people to other jobs when those positions opened. So we were paying two pools and we were renting another pool. So it was a, it was a, it was a financial drain for us. So, I mean, and some of that, if we knew ahead of time, like you wouldn't hire enough guards for two, but understanding the additional right. need of either needing to have buses to transport them over here and then overwhelming this or needing to pay um, rental like that. I think that's, it, it's a useful lesson that we uh, accidentally learned, but it helps inform these decisions. Yes. Hey, I'm looking at the clock. We're almost an hour in. Um, I know I've got other items. I, I just had one last question for you, Amy, which is um, maybe a silly question. What's the status of Mill River? Are we going to be talking about Mill River in the same way in a couple of years? Or is that um, healthier? Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully not for a while. Mill River is in better condition. Uh, Mill yeah. River got also has not had any significant upgrades, but it was built in the mid 70s. Um, okay. I think somebody happened to find a flyer today. For some reason, this literally came across my desk was the dedication of when the Mill River um, area, and I, I want to say it was 74 or 76 was when that one um, okay. opened. And so we, we've got maybe 20, 20 years, years on that, but let's, <laughs> let's maybe not wait until 20 years, but I think we do have some time. All right. Thanks for that. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or can we let Amy go? Actually, Amy, are you sticking around? I'm going to you... stick around, but I'll go okay. off camera and just if there's oh, anything yeah. else. I think I would like to move that we move OSRP to the next space. It's a really quick, easy one for us, but I think it's a it follows suit. Let's do that. All right. OSRP. Actually, I should also just acknowledge, I just looked, uh, um, I didn't ask for public comment. There are no, there's as far as in. I can tell, I, there have I been did. no. I did double check. There's nobody yeah. in the. Wait a minute. All right, OSRP, Ray. Okay, so uh, I want to thank everybody while they're here right now for indulging me in my whirlwind attempt at trying to get a couple of meetings in the last couple of weeks. Uh, that attempt was largely based on the time frame that was put together for the OSRP, for that uh, open space recreation plan. Um, uh, the reason why that that early July emergency meeting was was uh, uh, was was removed for us as an urgency, is because we did not have uh, the town basically said let's take a year. Amy just described that that process of saying let's let's wait a year. We don't need to apply for the grants this year. The OSRP was important to have that in for this year if we want to apply for the for those. Uh, for those grants that we were looking at there um our our pause on the pools made it so that dpw in particular town of amherst don't need to to apply for those for for that block grant for 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 the for the funding that we needed for that project right away that's a relief some of the pressure on myself in recreation it also relieves some of the pressure that was that that uh, uh, conservation was feeling to try and get that plan uh, updated and and submitted in time to, for the for our application process. So what happens next is uh, we can breathe a little bit. I'm sitting down this week with with conservation uh, and going over our next big steps into this. We have a chance to to take some of the survey data, which Again, thank you all for hearing that out. Thank you, certainly, Andy, for coming and helping me to gather some of the the uh, in person uh, survey data. Uh, we we may be asking for if anybody wants to participate in this and to look at what basically it's to look at what what recreation needs and interests are, what what our goals are for the next five years, five. To, to 10 years, what is, in terms of the space that we operate, in terms of uh, programming in that space, uh, 
uh, what are the what are the action what are the actual items in in town property for recreation um uh, and so i'm i'm going to be sitting down with conservation this week and going over some of our data going over some of the 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 uh, uh you know where we are in putting that that plan together uh, i would be happy to reach out to you all i'd be happy to share with you where that is as we as we move into it but if we are looking to try and do more follow-up research if we're trying to do more survey data and trying to do more to try and look at that information now we have a little bit of of time to to make that work um you know, you know we were the plan was going to be to have a, a draft on your table by that emergency meeting in july and that certainly was not it would have been it would have been problematic to try and get that in at that point. Um, we would have rather had uh, we would rather have had it in place so that we could go forward with the with the pools, but the 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 jam up of time on the pool project and us wanting to delay that us wanting to to draw that out actually gives us a chance to do this plan uh, with a little bit more care. Uh, so that timetable is is relieved dramatically. Any questions about that? I don't nope. know what participation would look like from the from the commission on that. Matt, I see your hand. Yeah, what do you need from us right now? Right now, nothing. Um, uh, uh, if you okay. want to take a look, if you want to take a look at anybody that would like to take a look at, at some of the survey data and be involved in the conversation the early part of the conversation uh certainly but if we do a, a follow-up with community members if we do a follow-up with some of it may be looking at rec history and what recreation has done uh, that's a charge that i could put forward to you all in the future dean uh yeah right where is the data and how did you collect that um that is that was the uh survey that we sent out online and then we followed up with a series of uh in terms of community data we we followed up with a series of in-person uh, uh surveys i did two of them for recreation one at groff one at mill and basically was able to talk to members of the community about the information about the data that came from from the uh, online survey and get follow up and to get some conversations with people. Uh, Where is that that we can, can we take a look at? You said we could take a look at some of those res you um, have the results or? I I can, I can take a look. Yeah, oh yeah, I think we actually shared it with you uh, before. I, I, let me let me get anything that we have for documentation to you. Um, I believe we shared it with you when we were looking for uh, the the feedback and the and uh, looking for participation in the in person surveys, but I let me take a look at it. it Maybe already with you. If not, I'll I'll get you anything that can get you. There's nothing. There hasn't been anything new since then. No. Uh, we will be looking at trying to, to look at the information that we were able to gather in those in persons and quantify and put that in paper. That's something that we haven't we haven't assembled yet um some of the some of the conversations some of the uh some of the uh, uh in-person surveys that we had people uh ranking ranking uh, the importance of our different initiatives of of recreation initiatives all right uh thank you for that ray um any other questions on OSRP? I just didn't, I didn't, because we spent so much time looking at pulling you together for that OSRP. I didn't want to, I didn't want to just uh, you know, table that and not tell you that we had tabled it because it's connected to those other, uh, uh, to those other projects. Appreciate that. All right. Um, then shall we jump over to pickleball? Um, I sent you all in the invite earlier, early last week, the the conversation with the uh, the the pickleball uh, community member um, that was asking about open play. Uh, 
that um, that to to refresh you, I could actually even share that that email if necessary. But the would you mind doing that? That'd be great. That. That's from June twenty eighth. If anyone makes it easier to find it. So this was the, you have the, the email in front of you. Um, in green down here, I would like to request that the current usage policy for the Mill River pickleball courts be amended. Currently, the policy is private groups only, first come, first serve for exclusive 90-minute play. I'd like to propose designating open play slots on three days for two hours each slot. Uh, this would include open play on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, for example, from 10 to noon for six hours a week. Open play allows one player to come to a court without a group and wait in line for their turn. No sign up required. This, this pickable etiquette protocol that seamlessly incorporates walk on players. Um, that is, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that the, the, the reason why that makes a lot of sense is because right now, our our uh, our only policy governing the, the the interplay between tennis and pickleball on the mill River, on the mill river courts is basically uh, you, know, you know you know it's a first come first serve sort of a situation and if if a group of four goes out to use the the courts they can use those courts this that is not the same spirit as as pickleball as open pickleball play is in other courts and other towns. It would be if we had a pickleball designated court which has open play. You can show up without a team and just wait. You put your racket on the board and you wait for your turn to jump on with maybe two other people, jump on with three other people. And it's a mix and match sort of situation. We don't have that opportunity because one person would not go to Mill River and and expect that somebody will let them on. One person would not go to Mill River without knowing that there's pickleball and open play going on. And so there's no reason, there's no, there's no it, it doesn't make sense for an individual or two people to just show up at the court and find out. The drop-in culture, which I think is a really powerful part about, about pickleball, that drop-in culture is just can't happen there. You have to go with a group that needs to go with a group, and you have to have your floor set or else you're not playing. That's, I, if I was to make the, uh, the, uh, uh, the request if, if, if I was to support the request, that would be the reason why. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, the reason why I wanted to bring this to you all is because that does, that is a shift. As I mentioned in my introduction to you, that's a shift from the way we, 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 uh, operate the way we the way we regulate any play on our courts that we don't have staff that we don't have rules basketball courts we don't have an open play rule where people come in and we have uh, for us to regulate that means means that we're taking an open space open recreation space uh, uh, and we're saying that now for this two hours we don't uh, this is designated for these folks that come in here for that open play and i don't know that that i I'm, I'm not opposed to that but but just the sake of that precedent i think it's something that at least i would want the recreation commission to have to have some insight into i mean is this dissimilar to open swim where essentially any like they can anybody can use it at that point it would be anybody can use those courts, but it would be designated for pickleball. The tennis courts there would be designated for pickleball. We would close it off for anybody else. We are scheduling, if they show up, if they don't show up, we're scheduling two hours of open play there for people to come in and, and use it for this specific purpose. All right, Matt, hey, before we get to you, so right now, the could you just share with the, the committee here how are the court 
How is the court time allocated at Mill River between tennis and pickleball? There is no formal out the allocation of the time. If you go over and the courts are empty, you can use the courts for pickleball. But the pickleball nets are always set up or they're not? Uh, we have, uh, if we don't have those, I, I actually, this is a good question because I, I don't know if we have the, the nets over with the uh, pools. But for the summertime, our our intention was to have the our our department nets at the pool so people could go over and give collateral and take those take those nets out and use them if they ever wanted to drop in and just hit on a, on an open court um but but from the time that it opens in, at at dawn to the time it, the park closes at dusk basically you can go over there and play tennis you can play pickleball there's one court over that's lined one of the two tennis courts is lined in two sides with pickleball the other one does not have pickleball lines so in terms of the um well you know let me i'll just pause matt why don't you go ahead yeah i think that that clarified some of the points so um that i had so what you're saying is open play means the court is for pickleball, not tennis, because you can't have open play tennis and pickleball at the same time. That doesn't work. Correct. Um, yes, yes. And it, 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 it's good that, that there, there are two tennis courts or there are two courts. And um, we're just talking about putting open play for some of the time, open pickleball play for some of the time on one of those courts. So the other court would still be open for tennis and along with the, the tennis courts at the middle school. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think that's perfectly reasonable myself. Thank you, Matt. Jean? So if they're open for open play and no one's playing, can someone play tennis there or no? Unless, uh, assumedly, if somebody showed up, they just weren't there at, what is it, 10 o'clock from 10 to noon, if they weren't there at 10 o'clock with pickleball for open play, then assumedly if this was set aside for pickleball, if somebody shows up with, with pickleball, ready to play pickleball at 1030, that it's set for pickleball at that time. I don't think that anybody on an open court with nobody there to chase them off would stop playing tennis in that situation. But it would be set aside for pickleball for those two hours. I do think as it's been a a, a, a guarded concern of mine to make sure that we're not the we are we are imposing there's an imposition that we knew was coming in when we converted the half of the tennis courts over for temporary pickleball courts we don't want to impose so much on tennis that we that we take prime hours that they're always using so part of it would be before we implement it would be to make sure that we're not uh, selling the farm here for pickleball i mean for tennis we're not we're not giving up optimal time and saying well 10 to tw 10 to noon makes sense for three days a week if those are the exact hours that tennis wants to use those core that tennis is in their peak times the the proposal here was not specifically for those times they aren't asking for those times or else but it was hypothetical you could go 10 to noon for pickleball those days um, if if that's a popular tennis time then we'd want to try and make sure that we aren't we aren't selling their popular time out but again it does make sense if you go to pickleball if you go to if you go to pickleball courts in other towns that have dedicated dedicated courts open play means people can show up and drop in and and put your racket on the on the board and wait to get on and so part of that culture comes through that Jonas. Uh, Jonas. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I used to play a lot of pickup basketball. It seems to make a lot of sense. You come and, um, you know, winners, basically usually it's winners next. But that gets me thinking, though, how this would work in practice. Um, so four, four people are in the pickleball court. I show up um, and I guess they have to pick one of them to leave, right? I, I have to slot in for one of them. So it's going to kind of come down to some common sense civility in practice, right? I don't think we can legislate. It's it's impressive. Pickleball, commu pickleball communities have have, okay. like, have that etiquette down to yeah. a science. Welcome where in. if I go by myself, I can put my racket in a in a queue basically, and then when three other rackets, three other open rackets 
get put in that queue, then the four of us go out to the court and we play. Oh, I see. You need to sh you need to wait for three additional new players. Right. To come up. A group of four, a group of four doesn't have to give up their spots. Oh. Uh, doesn't like I if I go with a set group, then I can go on. I don't. We don't have to break our group up. So that the first four people go, but the first, the, you know, somebody may be waiting there for five minutes. They could be waiting there for 20 minutes for other people to join them. But that open, the spirit of open play would be that somebody's going to come and put their rackets on next to yours. And there's some sort of scouting that goes on and says, I, yeah, I, I can, I, I think this is an appropriate game for me. Hey, yeah, we'll, uh, me and my partner will pull you two in over here. Let's play a friendly game. I guess where it differs from pickup basketball is yes if a loser you know like let's say it's 5v5 yes but whoever loses is off the guy's waiting maybe has one other two other guys he yep. picks up three of the guys who just uh, or people who left whereas on pickleball this the two people aren't going to just leave the court correct keep playing until there's a whole new set of four okay right. cool yeah i think it makes a lot of sense that that's a very good point i was thinking some of the same things jonas where I think that's different from basketball. That's different from volleyball. That's different from pool, right? Where you have a team and you swap a team out in pickleball. It's like everybody, it's like a student body off and new group on. Uh, yeah. And there's the, uh, a lot of times yet yeah, there's built in etiquette that says you are on for this amount of time. It's like until your game is over until for this amount of time, maybe after a while, somebody can say sort of basically a playing through sort of thing. You guys, you take like five minutes and wrap it up. Um, if somebody is hogging the court, if somebody's on the court for too long, then those folks that are, that are on the, on the board waiting, it really is there. It's, and I, I think the civility, I think the built-in civility, I'm, I agree, my life has been on basketball pickup sort of stuff and and the all that etiquette, all of the 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 argo of the of the of the courts, I think that develops organically and there's house rules wherever you go. I think it's kind of similar to pick up ultimate and that ultimate is dominated with the spirit of the game sort of stuff where you sort of incorporate people and move people in. And so there's the sense that ultimate Ultimate also has these pickup, pickup rules that that uh, can be a dance that they that they perform there. I think it makes sense, but I just like it seemed like the perfect thing to run by you all because it doesn't. I don't know if it's because it shouldn't. I don't know if it's something because historically we. I definitely didn't think it was something that we couldn't do, but before I made a policy shift, before I investigated a policy shift, I figured that that putting that by you all and and so you can acknowledge what what that that change is for administering the the court times would be signage would be easy, um, you know, following up and making sure that it was implemented in a way that didn't uh, you know, violate good neighborly behavior and and sort of we are imposing on tenants. I think there's some follow up that we'd want to do if we if we did sort of creep in and take a little bit more of the tennis situation. But we, they do have other spaces. They do have, and and it's they're not also regular in terms of their time. So we can we can try and massage that as much as we need to. So they, you meant tennis players or pickleball? Tennis players, tennis players, tennis players have other courts. Tennis players do have a long period of time. If we take, I'm kind of reading into uh, the the uh, petitioners. Uh, email here but it almost sounds like it's just six hours it's we're taking six hours for open play you guys can afford six hours of all that time for all those days of the of the week uh, like that's what i that's what i feel and i think i can echo that but that's what i feel that we we want six hours to run open play and and that shouldn't be that much of an imposition real quick before i get to gene the the Petitioner mentions current policy is private groups first come, first serve. So I guess I'm not totally clear how that's different from open. So that would be a group of four has to show up together because nobody knows when there's open group. Nobody would know. If, if so, so, the, so the difference is basically this allows a single person, two people or three people 
to potentially play instead of needing four. Yes, it allows people to go. Well, in. it's also uh, it's also the, the, the if they're on the court, they get it for ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, during so, open play, yeah. they also would get it. I'm sorry, you, yeah, you're saying currently sign, you get it for ninety minutes. Yes, the signage says I believe ninety minutes, and then you rotate off, and then somebody else is out there that that it's that it's set for ninety minutes. There's not a specific time where it's pickleball, but they're saying. Uh, what 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 the signage is saying what what our general policy is is not to hog the court beyond 90 minutes i uh, so um i'm sorry Gene, just one last thing like i i i agree with i think what everybody else said that this is common sense the only thing i would add is is 90 minutes too long i mean i don't know if there's any other spot where you would expect to be able to show up and have free access for 90 minutes certainly not a basketball court. 90 minutes the um, current policy is that or or the two minute two yeah. hours that they're asking for. Well, the current ninety minute. If four people show up, they they're guaranteed it for ninety minutes. Is that too long? I, I've I've not played, so I don't know how. Like, is it similar to like in ninety minutes? How many you know games or matches or sets or whatever do you play? Um, and maybe, maybe that is another way of approaching this in terms of getting more people more access is saying, look, you can't be on there for 90 minutes. To be fair, we don't have, we haven't had an issue that I know of. We haven't had an issue with wait time with people sort of, sort of checking their watch and saying, yeah, but we probably wouldn't know either though. Right. Cause we don't right. staff it, you know, right. they may show up and say, well, well you, you, you haven't, now. you haven't received complaints um, from anyway, the I, tennis I never, community. We have not received complaints from the tennis community um, about pickleballs on the court. Yeah, I was actually thinking other pickleballers. Right. Um, not not just tennis players, but all right. And sorry, Gene. Um... Yeah, no, no. That I I agree. Yeah, maybe lower it to an hour because I mean, you can get an, several games in there in an hour. <laughs> I think. Um, I was just, I was I was going to mention about the signage just to make sure that there's clear signage. I haven't seen. I haven't been to the courts since they've been since it's been added um to see the signs are there pickleball rules is there are a pickleball there, sign like how you play pickleball like the basic rules of we don't have them posted pickleball. no because i think that would be kind of nice too they're very simple and just it might encourage um people to use and play pickleball too because it is fun and there's it's a little conf confusing especially if it's like the scoring but if there, there's like eight basic rules i was just looking i was I happen to be watching the championship of pickleball on TV yesterday. Um, and it's pretty, <laughs> so the, I was then looking more into it. Like, yeah, I played just once or twice, but there's, you know, rules, a nice rule sign might be nice to have hanging up there. And if it could be in Spanish and English or other languages, that would be nice too. Certainly. Thank you. So what I guess to close that I will, I will do a little, my staff will do a little bit of, of uh, investigation into timing and making sure that we don't just, you know, sort of, sort of completely rip everything and go in another direction. I'll communicate with Pickleball. We will, we'll try and find the right balance to make that work for us. Uh, it's reasonable. So... <laughs> I'm assuming at that point the pickleballers will have to reinstall the tennis nets. No, uh, the they're on separate sides of the tennis court of one of the tennis courts, oh, okay. and so okay. they don't have to disturb the tennis nets at all. Perfect, because that's not a fun time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, did Andy leave us? Uh, so I will, I'll move on from that. And I, what I'll do right now is I'll, I'll just share now, where are you? I know we, we got stuck a little bit here. Let me, let me talk about the Cherry Hill working group. Um, so what I'm sharing with you right now is what I will submit to Paul Bachelman if uh, barring any interest in changes from you all. This is the charge for the working group for Cherry Hill. So you all see what, what uh, I see squinting. I'm going to. Um, yeah. 
this is this is the goals that I've been able to I've been able to put together for what we're looking for from the Cherry Hill Working Group. Um, the, the first one is real cost, looking at comparing the the cost of running Cherry Hill in a public golf course to to refresh you all just in case there's any any uh, confusion about where we are and what we're looking at here. We are it's a it has been a burden since long before I took over as the director of recreation here. The uh, the the budgetary complications uh, being underfunded. Essentially, we've been we've been uh, overspent there in all of my three years of being the director. And so the first point is to try and examine real costs of running a public golf course and comparing ourselves to comparable towns. Uh, we're looking at rising costs, industry, industry standards. We're looking at revenue sources. We're looking for a working group that can take on the task of trying to look at what the real costs uh, of running a course are, not what is supplied in the budget, but what the what the costs of running a course are, which means looking outside of ourselves and also looking at, at basically comparable uh, municipal golf courses here, other places to try and find out what, what uh, you know, what the cost is of, of you know, uh, what we should be spending money on in a nine hole public course. Second, second task is to look at the long-term viability of public golf in Amherst. So this is a little bit of survey looking at, looking at, at our, at, you know, with the schools, with our members, with daily greens fees, with, with, trends in terms of what it's, what's pulling people out of golf. We're looking at what the long-term market is for public golf at Cherry Hill. Um, um, uh, getting a sense of how viable it is. If we if we build a bunch of things, if we build a budget that takes care of this, are we gonna have people that wanna play golf in five years, in 10 years? Um, you know, so that one's basically looking at the market. The third one is looking at financial possibilities for course management. Uh, one thing that constantly is coming up is, which I just don't have experience with myself, but it will take a little bit of fresh eyes to look at the possibility Amherst Recreation right now is running since we purchased the course in the early 2000s. Uh, it's been run by Amherst Recreation, and the question is whether or not uh, 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 sending it to an outside source might be worthwhile. Is it cost effective to look at bringing somebody else in to manage the course? Uh, looking at opportunities for supplemental funding, looking at uh, you know the the costs and needs, looking at looking at what it is that our current budget leaves on the table for us. Um, basically what are our needs to make that course run here, specifically our course? And then, and then what is the best management options for us? And then, of course, to provide a recommendation for the town manager. Um, the, the group would be put together, would be assembled by the town manager. I would certainly put forward those that have the interest in being, being involved on our, on our group, but it would be a small working group that would, they would take these charges and come up with a picture for us. Uh, are there any questions, comments, uh, uh, adjustments, anything that I'm that, that should be added in that as I submit it to uh, uh, the town manager? Matt, I see your Matt? hand. Yeah, I guess Sanjay had made the point. Um, and I'm not sure how this fits in with this, what you've written, that it doesn't necessarily the, the goal shouldn't necessarily be for it to be um uh profitable or or you know non-profit you know cost recovery uh if you can demonstrate a public benefit to it being there um i mean one one way to read this is well how do we make this at least you know profitable or cost recovery um but I don't know if that should be the actual goal. And then secondly, in, t in, in addition, I, I'm not sure what supplemental funding means, but I thought that uh, particularly the people that are um, that I know that are probably have been talked about being on the on this would be interested in additional revenue sources. 
whether there's additional additional yeah. revenue sources or additional ways that we can promote this or you know if we if we I think I think that's what was on my mind when I'm thinking about supplemental funding. Uh, oh, revenue, yeah. Adding revenue sources. Can we can we build revenue sources? In supplemental your, revenue. Supplemental supplemental revenue. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about uh, certainly if there's any sort of uh, if there's any grant opportunities, if there's any public funding opportunities for us, which I I confess I just oh. don't. Well, yeah. But, 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 but what about but what about what about like if you sell if you sell beer there or something you know like people have people have brought up these other ideas like if you if you if you offer a concession to a food truck or just get a food truck there you know yeah That's um, what I'm too. yeah <laughs> or is there some other activity that can can happen on the golf course <laughs> um the questions Jean no Sorry, Ray, go ahead. No, go. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, yeah, not just supplemental funding, but supplemental revenue. How do you make more revenue? What else can, uh, yeah, what else can you, because know, there well, is you're, a you're, you're, session, you're, right? like that, so. part, of, part of your biggest things in golf are your membership, your green fees, and then obviously was brought up was alcohol and food and drinks. So your membership um, numbers are key, and then guest fees because with guest fees that's just sheer not profit on top of that but that's a huge pickup you know golf courses are rely on those guest fees i mean if i'm a member and i brought brought everybody to play you're all paying 20 bucks so there's four people playing i'm the member and so it's 60 other dollars just to play and then hopefully you rent the golf cart which is usually ten dollars per side for the golf cart that's and then I, I love the food truck idea because at least if the food truck idea is given that and then they buy beers from here, then you're a win. I just don't know, you know, how far away it is. You need five beers for nine holes, Chris. I can't do that anymore, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> probably not since oh well, I can't say that out loud. Probably not since I, I think school. he's talking about <laughs> one beer per person. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, and I mean, I don't, I think a lot of the golf around here is not even looking at it. They're like Twilight deals, whatever kind of deals. Like, you know, I mean, I bet if I drove up there right now, it's probably, you know, the carpet's rolled up and it's gone home, which it's 730. It's probably should be. But, you know, it's just, you gotta, you gotta try different, different things, you know, and, you know, even a cheaper membership. I mean, the membership I've looked at there is probably, $150 away from the membership at Amherst Country Club and you're nowhere near the conditions. You know, you gotta, you gotta, I can't, I can't, I sell cars. I can't sell a dirty car for a same amount. I mean, so a right. clean one. Yeah. So I mean, I mean you gotta, the price point is a really, really difficult conversation we've been having for a while. As soon as we start raising our user fees, it starts getting closer to, uh, private clubs or get, starts getting closer to clubs that, that that provide more for membership. It's it is it we, we run all of our we run all of our people out of out of Cherry Hill and we run them to other options. Um, and so raising <laughs> fees is definitely not our it, it's not an easy solution for us. Well, I think you honestly you should lower fees to uh, allow it to be more accessible for people that can't play as much, and then hopefully they go up and use it and grab that soda or grab that you know bring a friend and they pay the full uh, you know fee. Um, you know, it's just you know so, there's there's different options. I'm I'm still in on that board. By the way, if I'm you know on that one, I'm still in right now. That one. So got it, and I. Noted, I have you and Sanjay both as people I would put forward as as members to be involved in this. It'd be obviously doing some research with our own with our own budget and our own financing, with our own management decisions or limitations. Uh, it would mean uh, making some making some uh, research research connections with other courses and doing some comparative, doing a comparative study here. Uh, the working group to be 
to be clear, the working group is basically collecting information to make it, they're all going to be providing recommendation, any any working group in, that's put together by the town of Amherst, the, the goal essentially will be to provide information and a recommendation to the town manager on the charges that were put together. Uh, we are, if we keep on going the way that we're going right now, uh, and I think that people know what what Cherry Hill can do. I think they know that we're raising re we we are we're there's there's a lot of activity there, and we're it's making revenue. But the cost that it that it, that is going about the, the our you know, our budget doesn't align with operational responsibility right now. And so this is in a nutshell, it's a chance to look at what responsibility looks like for the town of Amherst when it comes to managing that that Cherry Hill budget? Is it something that we need to shutter all together because there's That's no good. way for for the course to to not lose a lot of money or not to for the course not to uh, basically, basically uh, if, if it's a case where the course cannot be financially successful then we're going to run into uh, we're going to run into public uh, 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 public relations issues, and we're gonna run into obvious financial issues. And right now, as the manager of this, I don't see, uh, I don't see how waiting for it to solve itself can possibly work. So it this really is, this is an important research topic for us. This, this is one of my main goals for this, for this year was to try and get some sense of, of, understanding to draw a picture of our of our financial situation at Cherry Hill. Hey Ray, remind, I thought when we when I first came on here, um we thought that the the financial situation was a little bit more bleak than it actually ended up being. A am I remembering that correctly or or not? Um there are a couple places where the end of last year's uh fiscal year, I think I think that we were uh, in order to balance the books, we I think the town of Amherst was able to find, uh, you know, emergency emergency money to take care of the money that we had lost lost money that we were spending at the uh, at the course. Um, okay. No, no. All right, and then uh, just two other thoughts. I will say, uh, Chris, I apologize. I know we've been talking about getting out there. I did make it out there without you. Um, I think last week. I th I thought. I thought the course was in fantastic shape. You know, I, I'm not, I don't golf regularly. I was, I was really, really happy. So Ray, you can pass it on to the, to the crew. Um, it looked great. And then Matt, thanks for passing on. I forgot. I, I think Sanjay had mentioned that in a earlier meeting, but I think a, nonetheless, um, a great point is, you know, does every offering, from the town have to be revenue generating or is it is it possible just to say that um we're going to have some lost leaders which provide a public benefit uh, i think it is it's something that we should be thinking about anyone quick question was there other people out there were there i was i got yeah. on first so i i got yeah. in like seven in the morning and yeah there were people who were lined up behind not lined up but there were tea times right, right behind us yeah it's great perfect I, yeah. seven in the morning it's a little early for me by the way anyway so you know i have this thing to contend with on a daily basis so hi macy hi macy hi. Um, she went through her first town meeting today so she's yeah sweet she's probably tired yeah I, all right i got, I got my next uh candidate for commission <laughs> um all right so, so for next step the ray you, you've asked for support chris yes. has raised his hand sanjay's raised his hand do you need anything else from us and then at this moment no. uh should we be should we be allotting some time in a future meeting to to brainstorm as a committee and that we don't need to answer that now but just as let's keep that in mind if if yes uh, you know if chris and sanjay feel like hey we've got some things we want to talk to you about i already heard you say yes um so Matt brought up Thanks the uh, Matt did give me a couple of things to look at for edits in here with the funding revenue piece and that 
Uh, and so the, what I submit to Paul, I will be sure that I, I get to you all, I'll, I'll submit to you all. So you see the, the working group charge, um, I anticipate that Chris and or Sanjay will be pulled into the working group at some point and they'll have, they'll have that as sort of their, their marching orders or if, or if the town manager decides to make an adjustment, he can make an adjustment to there also, but I want to make sure that the, the commission gets a chance to see what, what that charge is and you understand what, what our interest is just on the point about, about, you know, the, Sanjay's not here to claim it. And thank you, Matt, for reminding us of, of his point. Um, uh, it doesn't have to make money. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a, a uh, sort of a, a profit center for us. But when we're when we're looking at a $54,000 uh, um, overspent uh, in my first year, when you're looking at $50,000 overspent the second year, we're talking about a lot of money. If I'm doing, if I'm speaking for finance right now, I'm saying not making, not having a, a huge revenue builder, not having a, a huge uh, profit builder doesn't, it doesn't have to be the goal, but we can't, like, like I'm in trouble if I bring in a, a budget that's that far over, uh, overspent. Makes sense. Yeah. And I inherited yep. that mess. And so I'm not in trouble, trouble, but I'm in trouble that I need to feel. <laughs> I may be trouble if, if you were, we were losing money and the course is in bad condition. I agree. So like the people are doing their job, like, like your crew folks are doing their job. We just need more people to come out and golf. Okay. Um, all right. So you, um, I, and I guess the other thing I was going to say is just, I know that these are appointments by the town manager, but um, is there any way to, you know, I mean, Chris and Sanjay have, um, they've raised their hands, they're stepping up, they're volunteering, they're being part of rec commission. Is there anything we can do to, to just make sure they're on it? You know, not just random town person. Oh, yeah, I'll share they're, that. They're volunteering their time for this. I think it's really important that they have a voice and rec commission has a voice and an outsized voice, honestly. And if people... Disagree, I have then shared that. Join the rec commission. I have shared that, and it's been heard. I think I say that to you just to say that I'm not putting together the team. It's Understood. not like any other of the town managers calls there. I can say, "Hey, we're going to hire so and so," but I don't hire people. Uh, I, I can't put people on board. So if there's, I just don't want to tell Chris right now, "Hey, you're good. I'll just, I'll just get you in and." And see what happens there. I will. I will reconvey that message when we're talking about who to put on the working group. He could also just say, "Yeah, we thought about it. This working group's silly. Uh, let's." If he doesn't want to, if he doesn't want to put it forward, he could. He could take that that angle there also. Um, but okay. as as is proposed, I will be pushing for our volunteers to be on there. Thank you. All right. Um, any other items for Cherry Hill? Questions, comments? Okay. Fourth uh, of July updates. It's maybe more of a retrospective at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's 742. So I want to let you guys get out of here pretty quickly. Fourth um, of July was fantastic. Fourth uh, of July was, it's been two years of, of I think, a terrific event since our little oops uh, uh I, I think that this this was another very strong, very well received uh, event here. My team deserves Becky Demling deserves a lot of credit for putting that together. She was able to sort of be the whirling dervish that I had to be last year, um, and so that was that was an amazing piece of it. I thought we were I thought we progressed and did it a little bit better this year. Um, there are a couple things we're going to be trying to fix in terms of particularly in terms of day of collection. In terms of you know, collecting money, day of, um, you know, sponsorships were a little bit less. The rising cost of putting it on, uh, we're going to get a, a financial, uh, get, get a sort of financial report this week and find out just where we are in terms of meeting, uh, of matching the uh, revenue and expenses. But the uh, uh, it 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 definitely was a well received. 
cultural community out, but we had a lot of people come in. There was no incidents. I think the fireworks went off with with a pretty. It was a new with the bang. It was it was a, it was a new fireworks uh, pyrotechnic show, and I think we were a little bit worried about having somebody we weren't familiar with, you know, being the shooters for us. And I think that worked really well. Vendors were great. The beer garden came back and they were really happy. White Lion came in and they were really happy. I think our our sponsors were happy with the way that uh, Cress, uh, uh, Camille Theriac, the new Cress director, was our MC and she did a fantastic job. Uh, like all in all, I just think it was a really, really cool event for us. And we're very proud. Town Hall, I think, was happy with it. Uh, the the people that we found in the in the week, basically in the week since, I think have have been pretty glowing in their in their approval. So congratulations. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Matt. Um, let's go down the line here. Yeah. Do do you have an estimate of how many people were attended and uh, yes. and a guess at what the uh the profit loss situation was? Conversation with the the people we usually get our our uh, numbers from for crowd are always fire departments and we're uh, we worked on an estimate of 6,000 that were there in attendance um, um and so I think the numbers that we're reporting are 6,000 um the uh, in terms of the estimate of the profit loss I think we're gonna it's gonna end up being a loss if I had to guess it's gonna be end up being a loss because some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, donations are still coming in. It'll take care of some of that, but uh, with the rising cost of the of the fireworks themselves, and then some some uh, 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 service like details. Roughly, is it is it one thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand? Uh, I could. I could venture a guess, and it'd be a haphazard guess, but I'd say we 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 probably will end up being about a thousand dollars short. Oh, that's pretty small. Nothing. But, yeah. About, and I, if if that's cautious, then I'll I'll uh I'll come back and give you accurate numbers. But I think we're gonna we may end up being about a thousand dollars short. I'll say one. I, I would. I, I think with six thousand people, if you're a thousand short, the margin is probably one to five thousand dollars. Sorry, there's latency here. I was going to say, if you're within a thousand dollars, kudos to your estimates because that's a tough thing to do over six thousand people. Remember, six thousand people. We're not charging people admission. That's no, I, I know that. I know that, but just in terms of the the expected yes. audience. So, all right, uh, Jonas. Yeah, just a comment. I was there. Um, I I looked for um, some kind of presence of the wreck. Were you there, Ray? Um, like at a booth or something? Or? I was there at the booth. Okay. I was there at the booth, bouncing between the booth and our I responders. Couldn't find you. I wanted to. I'm, I apologize. And, oh no, worries. I was going to try to, you know, be useful if if I could. But uh, just the programming was really great. Like, so many cool stations for kids, and it made me wish I had five and six year old kids again. Um, it looked like a real good, real good time. So. Yeah, um, I was there too. The the food truck lines were really long. And didn't move very quick. That was like the only thing, but that was, yeah. there were so many trucks, but there were still like so many people. Um, so it was like my only, not like complaint, but I mean, what, but it was great that there were so many people that wanted to use the food truck. So I mean, we ended up eating there anyway. So <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was, it was good. Thank you very much. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, again, congratulations, Ray. And uh, please pass it on to Becky as well for all of our hard work on that. Yeah. Um, summer programs okay. going well. We started the summer well. I think that's, that's uh, uh, the, that brings us up to business. Uh, well, did you have any? Ray, do you have any other summer program updates? No, I, I was just going to say I don't need to belabor the. We got summer camps that started the week before July fourth. We got to work on that timing at some point. <laughs> but uh, so it was a it was chaos for two weeks. But summer camp. Summer day camps opened, our summer sports clinics opened, the pools are up and running. It, it's it's been kind of dreary and we've lost a little bit to to uh, kind of nasty weather here a couple of times, but it's been successful for all of those. Okay. 
Um, any new business? All right. Anything, Ray, you need from us aside from just conversations relative to uh, Cherry Hill and, and feedback on um, pickleball and I guess OSRP. Any anything else you want to call out for us? I I will just give you a heads up and say that. Um by our next meeting, we might be making notable headway into uh, pickleball forever home. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at trying to introduce uh, the, the uh, progressive next steps in finding a pickleball forever home. Um, and, and so as that comes, I will let you know, because it may involve a little bit of commission legwork there also. Uh, we learned our lessons from the first time. We learned our lessons from everything else that's going on around with pickleball. And so I think we have a little bit of a privilege of foresight. The only other thing that I would need from you all is to, before we leave, I tentatively completely on my, on my own, I chose August 12th, Monday, August 12th for the next date. Uh, if you all want to motion that as being a potential next date for a August meeting. Any violent disagreement to that date? I know it's still a month out and we've got vacations, but. For me. I knew vacations would be a big thing that. All right. I mean, let's, let's, let's. Still give me feedback if it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and send that earlier. I apologize to you all because I think when I run so close to the, to the meeting and Andy and I haven't talked in a little while, Gene and I haven't talked in a little while. We don't, uh, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, shoot, we have to get something in here pretty quickly i'll try and send that and send that uh meeting request earlier all right and then i guess the other just like would love to be connected via email on status of cherry hill i know we've talked about that for like a year and there's been conversation with these committees and you know we've got interested parties you know if uh if uh paul decides to pursue this or not you know just keep us up to speed uh, would be appreciated and then um yeah and you know just via email if there's anything else we can do in the interim um i guess you know relative to war memorial specifically i know amy had called out a couple of ideas she had um it sounds like that stuff that you're capable of running ray but if uh if you uh disagree or if you want more ideas you know let's just just keep the communication lines open Great. All right. Anything else from the uh, the crew here? No, Andy and Ray, I'll send you an email about ball, ball, ball. Uh, Excellent. Some potential for me. maybe Emerson right there confirmed for something because the coaches clinic or whatever you call it nowadays, my, my numbers about the captain's practice, and it was nice. The older girls told the girls at camp uh, one day we had 22 kids in there, and um, – so then, you know, that's been good. And uh, some of them are planning on trying out, but, you know, I always get worried about the ones that cut at that age. So I didn't know if there was a back door for Amherst Rec to make something there or pick something up. So yeah, I'll great. send it to you guys an email. Thank you. Noted. Thanks, Chris. All right, man. All right. All right. I'll talk to you. All For right. the good of the order, then we'll uh, motion to adjourn. I'm assuming, I, all right, I got the thumbs up from Matt. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the next month of your summer. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll see you uh, at Cherry Hill or on the pickleball courts or the tennis courts or somewhere at one of our facilities. Right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye, all. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.